Okay, everybody, welcome back. Uh, so today I'm going to go ahead and show you something called gas stoichiometry. Um, gas stoichiometry is really just a merging of two ideas. Uh, stoichiometry is stuff that we looked at in the past with calculating moles and mole conversions, and BCA tables, limiting reactants. So if you're new to refresher on that, you're always welcome to go back and watch those videos. Um, also, we're going to combine that stoichiometry with gases. So the stuff that we looked at with PV equals NRT, calculating moles and pressures and volumes. Um, so we're just going to basically be merging those two ideas together. So nothing new here, just the same thing that we've been doing, just kind of tying the two concepts together. Now I'm going to show you three approaches to solving these. Um, the first method is going to be the traditional way I do this, where I do the BCA table and show you with the stoichiometry calculations. Um, the second method and the third method are okay, they're just conditional. And I don't like those too much because you have to have certain conditions in order for those other two methods to work. But the first method is going to work no matter what you have, no matter what the conditions are, it'll always work. So I prefer to do it that way and I almost always do it this way. But I didn't want to hide those other two methods from you, so that's why I'm going to, I'm going to show you those as well, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and start off by looking at an example. Um, so the first thing we're going to do here is I'm going to set up the problem by putting down the information here. So I know that I have 100 grams of ammonia, and I'm trying to figure out how many liters of oxygen. Now in this problem, they didn't specify what the volume of the O2 should be at, so I'm just going to go with liters. doesn't say, so you can put any unit you want. Um, I also know that when I'm dealing with gases, I know that the temperature and the pressure is going to be important. So the pressure here is 1 atm. So I'm going to keep that note that as I'm looking at this problem. And that the temperature is going to be 273 Kelvin. Now all the stuff that we did with gases before still holds true. Um, so we want to make sure that our gases are at, at a, the temperature that we're using is in Kelvin. Um, and that all the units are going to match R if we happen to use that. Now, a little disclaimer here. When you have pressure and temperature equaled like they are, 273 Kelvin and 1 atm, these conditions are known as um, STP conditions, standard temperature and pressure. So when you have standard temperature and pressure, which means that your temperature is equal to 273 and your pressure is equal to 1 atm. So some of the problems you're going to see, instead of giving you temperature and pressure like this, it'll just say at STP. It saves the typing and also it's a reference point for chemists uh, when they're doing some some basic work. Um, and we're going to use this to our advantage later. So if you see at STP, that will clue you in that you can do one of the shortcuts. But like I said, be careful with doing that. So I'm going to do just like I did before, uh, going back to the traditional way using the BCA table. I'm going to find the moles. So the first thing to do is to find the moles of the ammonia. So that's my first step. How many moles of ammonia? So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so I figured out the moles of ammonia. So I'm going to put that into my table here. All right, so in this problem, I'm trying to figure out the moles of oxygen, okay? Now, let's actually back this up a little bit. If I'm trying to find the volume of O2, right, that's my ultimate goal is to find that volume of O2. Well, remember, if we're dealing with gases, right, since oxygen is a gas, the volume of oxygen is going to be based on the equation PV equals nRT. So if I want to find the volume of oxygen, I would need to know what the moles of the oxygen are. I would need to know the value of R, and this is O2, by the way, just in case you can't read that. And I would need to know the temperature, and I would need to know the pressure. So if I know the temperature, the pressure, the moles, and R, which of course I know, I can then figure out the volume of my oxygen. Okay, so if I find the volume of oxygen, I, I need to really find the moles of oxygen, which is really what I'm going to find right here. How many moles of oxygen do I need to react with this? So looking at the balanced equation we can see that this goes down by set 4x and this goes down by 7x we don't care about the products in this one so I'm not worried about those columns I'm just worrying about these two columns here now because I'm figuring out one reactant to the other both of these are going to go to zero at this point now I'm not going to do it but if you want to you can use this column to solve for x and then plug into the table and do like I showed you before you can do that I'm just going to go ahead and do this straight up with the um, you know, maybe I will show you that's really not that hard. So if you want to do it, the, the method of finding X, all you're going to need to do is do 5.869. So what I'm going to do here is find the value of X. All right, so once I have this equation here, I can then solve for X. And I'm not going to show you the steps. I'm just going to go ahead and put down what X is equal to. 
Okay, so now if you want, you can go ahead and use that 1.47 moles to fill out the table and finish the problem that way. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and solve it the way I did it before, calculating the, uh, the number of moles of the oxygen from the moles of ammonia. So here I have the moles of oxygen. So what I'm gonna do is one more step here. I'm gonna figure out the moles, I should say two more steps, uh, moles of oxygen. Okay, so what I end up with here is 10.27 moles of oxygen. That's the number that would go up in here. So if I wanted to, I could throw that number uh, in here and say that the oxygen needs to be 10.27 moles. Now, all of that stuff I'm doing here is is really been nothing but the stoichiometry. So if you go back to the previous stuff, it's all pretty much the same. Once I start doing this equation here, which is what I'm going to do next to find the volume of O2, is the... Um, starting to combine the gas stuff in here. So really, all I'm going to be doing is finding moles. And once I get the moles, I plug into the ideal gas law and get my pressure. So I'll do that next. OK, so when all is said and done and I'm finished, I end up with 230 uh, liters of oxygen. Technically, you need the decimal there for three significant figures because of the three that are given in the problem. Uh, but don't worry too much about that right now. OK, worry more about the setup in the problem. So. All I'm doing here is finding the moles and then getting those moles of O2. Now be careful here because what a lot of students tend to do because they don't pay attention to the units is they will take the moles that they calculate of the ammonia and they'll plug that number right in here. But I don't want the pressure of the ammonia. I want the pressure of the oxygen that's required to react with that ammonia. So I've got to make sure I do the conversion from the uh, ammonia to the oxygen. Okay, So just be careful and be aware of what moles you're plugging into the, uh, the, the ideal gas law equation. All right, so I'm going to set this up and I'll show you a second method which really just kind of substitutes the last step. So instead of using the ideal gas law, there's another method. So I'll set that up next. Okay, so this method is referred to as molar volume. So if you want to look into this in a little bit more depth, you can. Uh, the idea is that scientists or chemists have put together a way to try to turn gases into like an, kind of like a molar mass is really what this is, but for gases based on their volume. Because at STP, again, at the temperature and pressure given here, every gas, no matter what gas it is, the volume is always going to be 22.4 liters every time you have one mole. So it's a way of connecting moles to volume. I'm not going to go into the derivation of that number. You can plug all the data into here and figure that out for yourself by plugging in the pressure, temperature, and moles and solve for that volume. But again, this is just a little shortcut. I don't want to go into too much depth here because again, I think this is a more powerful method because you can only use this if it's at STP. If it's not at STP, you would either have to recalculate this or go back to the original method. So how does one do this? Well, first you need to stop using the word one. I don't know why I said that. That was kind of weird. But uh, what you would want to do here is take the 10.27. You need your moles of oxygen. So you still have to do this first set up here. And you're going to start with the 10.27 moles of O2. All right, you've got to make sure again that you convert it from the ammonia to the oxygen. All right, so to do that, you're going to take your moles of oxygen and you're just going to go from the moles of oxygen to the liters of oxygen. Okay, and we're going to use this concept here because we're at STP, one mole of oxygen would be equivalent to 22.4 liters and you would just do that calculation. It's that simple. But be careful because like I said, it's only going to work if you are at STP conditions. So be wary of that. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the third method. So to do the third method, what I need to do is I need to, we're going to look at a different problem because the conditions have to be a little bit different. So let me go ahead and set that up. Okay, so here we are set up for the uh, third method. Now, the third method is, um, well, it, it tends to be the easiest method, but it also tends to be the most conditional method. So I would be very cautious if you're going to do this method here. Um, so the first condition that you need to have met is that the temperature and the pressure have to stay the same. So temperature and pressure must remain constant. They can't change from the beginning or the after. So remain constant throughout the whole problem. That's the first one. The second one is that the, the problem has to be converting from volume to volume. So you need to be finding the volume of one and converting to the volume of the other. And basically you have to be going gas to gas in this problem. So converting to the water wouldn't work to the, for this problem. So volume to volume is the other condition. So if those two criteria are met, and you can remember, then this is pretty simple. The idea is that the balanced equation, the coefficients, can then become liters. You can actually treat this as if these 
numbers here are in volume. So this would be four liters, seven liters, four liters, and six liters. You can change the co. If we did that before, where we said that these were four molecules of ammonia, then we said no, they're really four moles of ammonia, or they could also be thought of in that terms. And the same thing can be done with volume. Um, you can also do this trick with pressure and pressure, but again, the conditions must be pretty consistent. So notice in this problem, we're looking for volume. We have excess reactant of the ammonia and the limiting reactant is the oxygen. So we're gonna start with the 3.56 liters of O2. Um, so again, this problem you don't have to worry about it, but there are problems just like before where you have to find your limiting reactant. All right, so all I'm gonna do is just go from the liters of oxygen to the liters of NO2, the nitrogen dioxide I'm looking for. In this case, it's just a simple four to seven ratio between those two. And all I do is do the calculation and I end up with 2.03 liters of nitrogen dioxide. So like I said, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I can do it all in one step, but the conditions must be met for that to happen. All right, so if you get confused, you don't wanna do this method, the other way to do it would be to go back to the regular stoichiometry stuff, convert this to uh, moles of oxygen, okay, would, which would be using PV equals NRT to do that. Then you would use the balanced equation to go to the moles of NO2, okay, so that would be the stoichiometry that is going from 7 to 4 ratio, and then use, uh, you know, find the volume of the NO2 using PV equals NRT. So that would be the other way to do that. It's a little bit lengthy, I get. There's a lot more steps and a little bit more calculating and plugging in, but it will work every single time, even if these conditions aren't met. Okay, so there you go. Three different methods for calculating the, or actually doing stoichiometry problems. Um, so there you go. See you later, guys. Take care.